Hi viewers and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at datum planes and what they are and what they can be used for. If you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. Well what is datum? Well according to FreeCAD Datum is normally used to refer to auxiliary geometry in the part design. These geometry elements will not form part of the final shape of the body, but can be used as reference and supports for sketches and other types of features. And there is a number of datum items in there, including point, line, plane, and coordinate systems, like you would use in the sketcher. So when you're doing your sketch, you could have your datum points in there that constrains your sketch but a datum plane can be used for multiple things it allows you to actually sketch on a different coordinate system so you normally got if I click on say uh, which one have I got I've got the section view open so if I show you the coordinate system of the section view so you've got the ZX plane then you've got the ZY plane and you've got the, if you can see it, down here is the XY plane. So that's three planes you can actually sketch upon or build upon. But what a datum plane allows you to do is it gives you a secondary plane to actually sketch on. So that's actually a very bad example. Let's go up to a different example I have here. So I've got a number of bodies here that each have an example on that I've put together that I can show you. So this datum plane here, and we'll show the current coordinate system. So you can see I've actually created a plane along here. So this, this is a new plane. So it's sitting on the XY plane, but at an angle. And we can change this to whatever angle we want. So it hasn't, isn't actually really sitting on there, it's just independent of that XY plane, but I created a different angle on there. And you can change the angle of the plane just by creating a data plane and double click on it. And you can either use this referencing system here, so I've got it actually selected a pad to re reference this, this on, and I've changed the pitch of it, so it pitches forward. And that gives me this plane to actually work upon. So I can add, add sketches on here and pad and pocket those sketches. So this is all to do with the part design. Just cancel out of there. And what it allows you to do, so if I go into this one here, and let's just hide that origin. What else you to do is actually the, I've created a pocket on this sketch. So if I hide that pad a minute, you can actually see, or well, enable that pad, you can actually see I started off with a square. I then added a datum plane. And in that datum plane, I have a sketch. So if I go into my sketch, you can't really see it at the moment, but this is where your uh, switch between selection view and full view comes in handy. So I've just switched there, and you can see what I've done. I've sketched this on that datum plane. And if you think of the application for what I'm doing here, so I've sketched that on the datum plane and I've pocketed that, that item, that sketch, I'm actually creating a charging holder so the device actually has a male and female section so the female section slides into this and it's held by gravity on the actual charging dock but I wouldn't be able to do this with standard pocket by attaching it to the face because it will just end up being up here and I would have to start adding drafts and chamfers to get it into the right, right position and the right angle. So all I did was create a datum plane 
and I added my sketch to the datum plane like so and because it's at that angle when I pocket that from the center upwards it removes material and leaves me with this shape that I so desire so that's one example so that is actually cutting or pocketing it should really be pocketing with a datum plane so you can actually do that so another example is if I go into this one so this is adding a feature on the side of a cylinder so we've got cylinder and it's been it's 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 basically something to actually hold liquid if you placed a handle on here it would look like a kettle or an oil drum look at the top it's got the fillet at the top and we have a pipe so you can see it there and that if you can see inside just inside there let's see if I can get in you can see we've got movement and you can actually see that it's hollow inside so what have I done here well if I wanted to create this pipe on this surface I wouldn't be able to because I can't actually attach a sketch to this surface so let's go into part design a minute and let's make sure that body is active so toggle active body and click that thickness there so this is actually done with a thickness and then a fillet on top you see the fillet in there so if I select that then if I try to actually add a sketch to that it says you need a planner face to support this for the sketch so I need some kind of flat face so this is where datum planes come to the rescue so if we look at how this has been built let's cancel that so we start with a cylinder and then that cylinder has been actually derived from a pad from a sketch so let's have a look at the sketch so there's the sketch it's just a circle nothing spectacular there and it's been padded upwards 20 millimeters and then we have a datum plane that's intersected that cylinder of where I want to put the pipe and what I've done also is filleted it as well so I've actually put the filleted it in and then just the datum plane to actually place that in position so I can actually draw a sketch on that to actually create the pipe so then I drew a sketch which you can't see because I've turned it off and I just bring that fillet out that datum plane is sitting there that sketch just double click on that Let's see what that sketch shows a hole on here somewhere where is it so that sketch must be in the pad there it is so there's a sketch it's part of that pad so it won't show actually on the datum plane because that is the wrong sketch what sketch is that let's get rid of that sketch don't need that sketch right that's better so that's the datum plane there's that pad there's that sketch for the sitting on the datum plane that's much better now so I can see what I'm doing so that's that sketch there sitting on the actual datum plane you can see it's at an angle so we'll close that And what I've done with that sketch is that one there, I've actually padded that sketch up. So it creates this here. So there's the pad, you can see the pad there. Forget if I actually hide that pad, you can see the whole lot actually hides, but the pad is actually that part there. So I click on that pad. There you can see 
it's highlighted that one there and then I've created a thickness inside that and what that's done is it's hollowed out the inside of that pipe and actually the inside of the whole object as well like so so there's another way of using a datum plane if you want to actually attach something to a chamfer or a curved side where you can't actually do that then you'll use a datum plane position it in there add your sketch and then do your operations on that sketch so we'll move to the next one now which is closed internal structure it's quite an interesting one so I've got a cube and inside that cube floating in there or which has been carved in there the cube I've actually made transparent so you can actually see what's in there there's a structure like a maze structure and that is created again by a datum plane which has been placed let's open that up and let's get rid of some of this so we don't get confused like I've just done section through here they are close internal structure so we have a pad and I've changed the actual transparency of that and that is done by the closed internal structure the actual body and if you look at the view down here I have transparency so I've just changed the transparency of that so you can actually see in there you have this pad and then I've placed a datum plane in the center like so and on that datum plane I've actually placed a sketch and that sketch is made up of a series of rectangles that have been trimmed together so we get this effect here like so and what I've done with that is I've created a pocket so what happens with that is that if I double click on that you can see that the pocket is in two dimensions so we've gone up and down so two dimensions five mil and five mil and if I just did this in a single dimension you can see what's going on there we go like so so that's removed the material from the inside let's just cancel out that and show that pocket so you can see that's removed that material inside so if you were 3D printing this what you'd get is a solid cube and inside you'll have this internal structure if you're thinking about cooling systems or something like that then where water would come in one side or even if this was some kind of transparent material and you had a hole to place like a ball in you could have a, a cube maze or something like that so depending on what the application you can actually use that so that's actually creating an internal structure with a datum plane adjustable mirror now this one is I came across this um, a couple of days back actually I was trying to figure out a way around my sloppiness for not constraining sketches so and I've, I've recreated what's actually happened what the problem I had now if we look at this body and I take it from the beginning I actually want the origin to show you what's actually happening here I've got a pad and on that pad I've just it's just a square sketch that's been padded upwards but look where that square sketch sits and there's the XY plane I haven't fully constrained it to be symmetrical with the center what I wanted to do is actually create a mirrored pad on here of one of the sketch items that I've added and this actually happened with 
when I was actually modeling something, um, I was sloppy with my constraints and I didn't constrain this to the center. So when I went in here to mirror, my mirror is off because our mirror always is mirrored along this line or along this line. So what did I do? So I came in here, I created some pockets just for fun. Don't really need those, but there you go. Um, I created a pad with this one here, and then I mirrored this. And you can see how off that is from the center of this square. It's actually is dead on. It's the same distance away from the actual intersecting plane. So this plane here, you can see that that runs dead through the center of these two. But I actually wanted these two in the center of this square. So how do I fix that? Well, I left that mirror in there and I then created another pad, which was similar to this this hexagon. I've got the pad, so we've got that. Um, I was gonna to try to hide those two, but I'm not going to. And then I created, I wanted this to actually be mirrored along that center. So this is roughly about the center of this square, if you think about it. Now, if I try to mirror that, it will appear over here like this one's done because it takes this line here and it does a equal distance away from what you've done. So this pad, equal distance away and pads it over here. But if our shape is off the center of the origin, then we've got a problem. And when I went back to my model, I couldn't actually move my model because it started breaking sketches and because other things were fully constrained and other things weren't. It was just me being sloppy. But to get around that, rather than going back and spending hours trying to fix it, which I should have done really, I created a datum plane and I used that as a source for the mirror. So if I click on the mirror, you can actually see that this is now being mirrored rather than by the center of origin it's being mirrored by the equal distance away from the datum plane like so so if i double click my mirror that's my datum plane double click my mirror you can see i've got a pad there and the datum plane i selected which is actually allow that to be placed equally equal distance apart and I can actually move that datum plane to wherever I want so let's have a look at the datum plane look at data look at placement see the map mode is deactivated I haven't actually got it mapped to anything if it was actually mapped to something then I wouldn't be able to change this placement that's important and we'll go position and we're looking at what axis are we looking at? X axis? Is it X axis? Yeah, it's at the X axis. And if I change that, so I place it over here, you'll notice that, well, our has vanished. Where's that vanished to? That may not have been a good idea because it's actually gone off the side. Let's bring that because that's broken that mirror. So let's bring that back. See where it would be mirrored to. There it is, but that's actually broken that because it's not, not actually on the surface. So let's bring that back a bit. Let's cancel that mirror. And that datum plane, which is okay. So I'm going to move that. I have four, so I'm gonna move that back to really close, right close up there, or even intersecting. And you can see that how that's mirrored now. So that's mirrored and intersected the original. And if I move this to about there, 
you'll see the mirror changes. So that's one way of using that for mirrored objects and fixing plain problems in there. Right, so that's adjustable mirror. So let's get rid of that. And the other one, so I'm gonna do five in here. I'm gonna, every now and again, I'll find a few more and actually I put more onto my channel and show you how to do those. But I'm gonna go actually go through these one by one in future videos and show you how I actually built these from scratch and probably using some better objects. So this one is a section view. So on my channel, uh, I've talked about section views before, but this time, rather than doing it for technical drawing, I've done it for a model that I've taken a section out so I can actually see inside there. It's more like a presentation, but we could actually start drawing on this face if we so desire. I'm not going to. Um, so I've got a toggle, a toggle active body. There we go. There we go. So I can actually start drawing on that face if I so desire. But this allows me to do a section view in there. Let's just find that datum plane. So this one is, it's got two datum planes in there. So I've created an internal structure as I did with the internal structure example which is closed internal structure so it's just a copy of that body and i've placed a datum plane somewhere where is it there's datum plane five and that's sectioned out a part of this model that i want to do a section view into or i want to expose the internals with and what I've done is used a pocket, so I've removed material. And if I look at the sketch that sits on that datum plane, there's that sketch. So it's a B spline sketch. That's just a random pattern on there, on that datum plane. And I've done a pocket from there. So you can see if I just did it's one mil you can actually see inside I'm pointing to the screen and you can't see me pointing <laughs> so you can see where it's starting to pocket there so if I did five and see that starting to section away so I've pocketed it in dimensions going upwards and I've added the reverse on there. If I click on reverse, it'll go the other way. It's coming out the other side there. But I've just reversed that and allowed it to come out of the top. Leaving the section view, so that's a bit more. There we go. So that's another way of using a datum plane to actually create a section view like that. So throughout these, uh, you would see little links coming up. So you may not have get, got anything yet, but by the time I finish the other videos, you'll actually see them on my site. So this is more like an index into those videos to show you actually how to do them. The reason why I'm keeping them separate is because they're much easier to, to find on YouTube. Um, if I did them all in one video, people will miss them when they're actually search searching for different things and I don't want to place too much in the tags and in the description because A, it becomes hard to find and B, YouTube can actually do you for spamming the actual keywords. So I like to keep that separate and that means there's individual videos that are much smaller for you to digest and much easier for people to learn. I'll see you soon with these videos and I hope that's helped. Um, that's some planes, very cool thing to actually get under your belt and understand how to use. Thank you for all the donators, the subscribers, the watchers, the comments, love the comments on there. You've been really supportive for me and thank you for the journey through YouTube and I'll see you again shortly.
If you like what you see, and please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.